Now, finally, we get to the transformation zone. Now, this is the zone that really defines the success or, or the failure of, of the disruptive innovation investments in the long term. The idea here is to scale a disruptive, a disruptive option to material revenue, which means greater than 10% of total revenue during a Horizon 2 period, which is typically a two-year period. We say 18 to 36 months to, to do that. So if, to think about how that works, you've got an incubation zone, you've got a bunch of, of candidate independent operating units in Horizon 3 in the incubation zone. You've got a performance zone, which has got a performance matrix. And what you want to do is you want to insert a new row into the performance zone. You're going to create a net new line of business that, 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 that investors will see. So Amazon is a retail company and all of a sudden there's a net new line of business called Amazon Web Services. It changes the value of the corporation dramatically. Apple was a PC company, then it had a music business, then it had a smartphone business, then it had a tablet business. Three new rows in the performance matrix changed the value of the company dr dramatically going forward. So the key idea behind that is you've got to navigate the bottleneck in the hourglass. So the whole point is what could you do in the transformation zone that would allow your company to break the back of the innovator's dilemma, which is essentially another way of saying that is get a project through the, 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 the choke point. Uh, of Horizon 2 in, in the hourglass uh, approach of, of innovation uh, maturity. So, when you do this, the key understanding is this is an unnatural act from the point of view that you cannot do business as usual and perform this act successfully at the same time. Because, it, because what happens when you try to trans, when you take one of these disruptive innovations and bring it to scale, you make demands on the rest of the corporation that far exceed the normal bandwidth of what they can, of what they can absorb, their elasticity. You're snapping their elastic is what's happening. So in the performance zone, I want to take this disruptive innovation from, say, 1 or 2% of our total revenue to 10%. Well, I need 10% of the sales force to do that. And in fact, the truth is, because it's an inefficient sales motion, I probably need 15% of the sales force to do that. And I have an overlay sales force, but boy, that's getting expensive. And now all of a sudden, my contribution margins and my book to bill and all my operating expenses, they all look crazy. And, and so there's enormous pressure now on the performance zone to say, can I make my number and do this? The productivity zone's getting the same, the same heat. So now all of a sudden, the productivity zone's got to step up its capability, much more program support to go into the trend, uh, 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 to support the, the innovation in the transformation zone, but also they've got to do a lot of systems efficiency to pull out the resources in order to allocate them uh, to the transformation zone. And then the incubation zone's got to understand, look, we've got one in the hopper in the transformation zone. We sure as heck can't take a second one. So wh wherever you are in your life cycle, you have to now consider one of the other five exits because, because we cannot have two in the, in the hopper at the same time. The key point here, and that is the key point, this, this notion of taking something to scale in the transformation zone, it's a massively disruptive undertaking. The CEO must lead it. He's the only, he or she is the only person that can lead it. You cannot delegate it to anybody else in the company, and you can never do two in parallel. You must only do one. And I have to say that, 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 that notion that the CEO is the only one that can lead and that you cannot do two at the same time, those two are the principles that are most likely to have been violated in the 54 companies that didn't catch the next wave.